The twelve-tone technique, also known as dodecophony, twelve-tone serialism, and in British usage, twelve-note composition, is a method of musical composition devised by Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg (1874–1951) and associated with the Second Viennese School composers, who were the primary users of the technique in the first decades of its existence. The technique is a means of ensuring that all twelve notes of the chromatic scale are sounded as often as one another in a piece of music while preventing the emphasis of any one note through the use of tone rows, orderings of the twelve pitch classes. All twelve notes are thus given more or less equal importance, and the music avoids being in a key. Over time, the technique increased greatly in popularity and eventually became widely influential on 20th century composers. Many important composers who had originally not subscribed to or even actively opposed the technique, such as Aaron Copland and Igor Stravinsky, eventually adopted it in their music. Schoenberg himself described the system as a method of composing with twelve tones which are related only with one another. It is commonly considered a form of serialism. Schoenberg's countryman and contemporary Joseph Matthias Hauer also developed a similar system using unordered hexachords or tropes, but with no connection to Schoenberg's twelve-tone technique. Other composers have created systematic use of the chromatic scale, but Schoenberg's method is considered to be historically and aesthetically most significant. History of use Invented by Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg in 1921 and first described privately to his associates in 1923, the method was used during the next 20 years almost exclusively by the composers of the Second Viennese School — Alban Berg, Anton Webern, Hans Eisler and Schoenberg himself. The twelve-tone technique was preceded by freely atonal pieces of 1908 to 1923 which, though free, often have as an integrative element a minute intervallic cell, which in addition to expansion may be transformed as with a tone row, and in which individual notes may function as pivotal elements, to permit overlapping statements of a basic cell or the linking of two or more basic cells." The twelve-tone technique was also preceded by non-dodecaphonic serial composition, used independently in the works of Alexander Scriabin, Igor Stravinsky, Bella Bartok, Karl Ruggles, and others. Oliver Neighbor argues that Bartok was the first composer to use a group of twelve notes consciously for a structural purpose. In 1908, with the third of his 14 bagatelles, essentially, Schoenberg and Hauer systematized and defined for their own dodecaphonic purposes a pervasive technical feature of modern musical practice, the ostinato. Additionally, John Kovach argues that the strict distinction between the two, emphasized by authors including Pearl, is overemphasized. The distinction often made between Hauer and the Schoenberg school. That the former's music is based on unordered hexachords while the latter's is based on an ordered series. Is false, while he did write pieces that could be thought of as trope pieces. Much of Hauer's twelve-tone music employs an ordered series. The strict ordering of the Second Viennese School, on the other hand, was inevitably tempered by practical considerations, they worked on the basis of an interaction between ordered and unordered pitch collections. 
Rudolf Retty, an early proponent, says, "...to replace one structural force tonality by another increased thematic oneness is indeed the fundamental idea behind the twelve-tone technique." Arguing it arose out of Schoenberg's frustrations with free atonality, providing a positive premise for atonality. In Hauer's Breakthrough Peace Nomos, op. 19, 1919, he used twelve tone sections to mark out large formal divisions, such as with the opening five statements of the same twelve tone series, stated in groups of five notes making twelve five note phrases. Schoenberg's idea in developing the technique was for it to replace those structural differentiations provided formally by tonal harmonies." As such, twelve-tone music is usually atonal, and treats each of the twelve semitones of the chromatic scale with equal importance, as opposed to earlier classical music which had treated some notes as more important than others particularly the tonic and the dominant note. The technique became widely used by the 50s, taken up by composers such as Milton Babbitt, Luciano Berrio, Pierre Boulez, Luigi Dallapicola, Ernst Krenick, Ricardo Malapiro, and, after Schoenberg's death, Igor Stravinsky. Some of these composers extended the technique to control aspects other than the pitches of notes such as duration, method of attack and so on, thus producing serial music. Some even subjected all elements of music to the serial process. Charles Wurenen claimed in a 1962 interview that while most of the Europeans say that they have gone beyond and exhausted the 12 tone system, in America, the 12 tone system has been carefully studied and generalized into an edifice more impressive than any hitherto known. American composer Scott Bradley, best known for his musical scores for work like Tom and Jerry and Droopy Dog, utilized the 12 tone technique in his work. Bradley had learned the concept as a student of Schoenberg. Bradley described his use thus, the twelve-tone system provides the out-of-this-world progressions so necessary to underwrite the fantastic and incredible situations which present-day cartoons contain. An example of Bradley's use of the technique to convey building tension occurs in the Tom and Jerry short Putton on the Dog, from 1953. In a scene where the mouse, wearing a dog mask, runs across a yard of dogs in disguise, a chromatic scale represents both the mouse's movements, and the approach of a suspicious dog, mirrored octaves lower. Apart from his work in cartoon scores, Bradley also composed tone poems that were performed in concert in California. Theodore Norman played the guitar part in Columbia Records' 1957 recordings of Schoenberg's Serenade, Opus 24, and Pierre Boulez's Le Marteau Sans Maître, The Hammer Without a Master. He went on to compose a number of twelve-tone pieces for solo guitar. Topic. Tone row The basis of the twelve-tone technique is the tone row, an ordered arrangement of the twelve notes of the chromatic scale the twelve equal tempered pitch classes. There are four postulates or preconditions to the technique which apply to the row also called a set or series, on which a work or section is based. The row is a specific ordering of all twelve notes of the chromatic scale without regard to octave placement. No note is repeated within the row. The row may be subjected to interval-preserving transformations. That is, it may appear in inversion denoted I, retrograde R, or retrograde inversion re, in addition to its original or prime form p. 
The row in any of its four transformations may begin on any degree of the chromatic scale, in other words it may be freely transposed, transposition being an interval-preserving transformation, this is technically covered already by 3, transpositions are indicated by an integer between 0 and 11 denoting the number of semitones, thus, if the original form of the row is denoted P0, then P1 denotes its transposition up upward by one semitone similarly i1 is an upward transposition of the inverted form, r1 of the retrograde form, and ri1 of the retrograde inverted form. In Hauer's system postulate 3 does not apply, a particular transformation prime, inversion, retrograde, retrograde inversion together with a choice of transpositional level is referred to as a set form or row form. Every row thus has up to 48 different row forms, some rows have fewer due to symmetry, see the sections on derived rows and invariants below. Example <laughs> 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 Suppose the prime form of the row is as follows Then the retrograde is the prime form in reverse order The inversion is the prime form with the intervals inverted so that a rising minor third becomes a falling minor third, or equivalently, a rising major sixth And the retrograde inversion is the inverted row in retrograde P, R, I and Re can each be started on any of the 12 notes of the chromatic scale, meaning that 47 permutations of the initial tone row can be used, giving a maximum of 48 possible tone rows. However, not all prime series will yield so many variations because transposed transformations may be identical to each other. This is known as invariance. A simple case is the ascending chromatic scale, the retrograde inversion of which is identical to the prime form, and the retrograde of which is identical to the inversion thus, only 24 forms of this tone row are available. In the above example, as is typical, the retrograde inversion contains three points where the sequence of two pitches are identical to the prime row. Thus the generative power of even the most basic transformations is both unpredictable and inevitable. Motivic development can be driven by such internal consistency. <laughs> <laughs> Application in composition Note that rules 1 to 4 above apply to the construction of the row itself, and not to the interpretation of the row in the composition, thus, for example, postulate 2 does not mean, contrary to common belief, that no note in a 12-tone work can be repeated until all 12 have been sounded, while a row may be expressed literally on the surface as thematic material, it need not be, and may instead govern the pitch structure of the work in more abstract ways. Even when the technique is applied in the most literal manner, with a piece consisting of a sequence of statements of row forms, these statements may appear consecutively, simultaneously, or may overlap, giving rise to harmony. Needless to say, durations, dynamics and other aspects of music other than the pitch can be freely chosen by the composer, and there are also no general rules about which tone rows should be used at which time, beyond their all being derived from the prime series, as already explained. However, individual composers have constructed more detailed systems in which matters such as these are also governed by systematic rules see serialism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Properties of transformations. The tone row chosen as the basis of the piece is called the prime series P. Untransposed, it is notated as P0. 
Given the 12 pitch classes of the chromatic scale, there are 12 factorial tone rows, although this is far higher than the number of unique tone rows after taking transformations into account. There are 9,985,920 classes of 12 tone rows up to equivalence, where two rows are equivalent if one is a transformation of the other. Appearances of P can be transformed from the original in three basic ways transposition up or down, giving P chi, reversal in time, giving the retrograde R. Reversal in pitch, giving the inversion I, the various transformations can be combined. These give rise to a set complex of 48 forms of the set, 12 transpositions of the four basic forms, P, R, I, Re. The combination of the retrograde and inversion transformations is known as the retrograde inversion Re. Thus, each cell in the following table lists the result of the transformations, a four group, in its row and column headers. However, there are only a few numbers by which one may multiply a row and still end up with 12 tones. Multiplication is in any case not interval preserving. <laughs> Derivation Derivation is transforming segments of the full chromatic, fewer than 12 pitch classes, to yield a complete set, most commonly using trichords, tetrachords, and hexachords. A derived set can be generated by choosing appropriate transformations of any trichord except 0, 3, 6, the diminished triad. A derived set can also be generated from any tetrachord that excludes the interval class 4, a major third, between any two elements. The opposite, partitioning, uses methods to create segments from sets, most often through registral difference. Topic: <laughs> Combinatoriality Combinatoriality is a side effect of derived rows where combining different segments or sets such that the pitch class content of the result fulfills certain criteria, usually the combination of hexachords which complete the full chromatic. Invariance <inaudible> 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 Invariant formations are also the side effect of derived rows where a segment of a set remains similar or the same under transformation. These may be used as pivots between set forms, sometimes used by Anton Webern and Arnold Schoenberg. Invariance is defined as the properties of a set that are preserved under any given operation, as well as those relationships between a set and the so operationally transformed set that inhere in the operation." A definition very close to that of mathematical invariance. George Pearl describes their use as, "...pivots", or non-tonal ways of emphasizing certain pitches. Invariant rows are also combinatorial and derived. Topic: <laughs> Cross partition. A cross partition is an often monophonic or homophonic technique which arranges the pitch classes of an aggregate or a row into a rectangular design in which the vertical columns harmonies of the rectangle are derived from the adjacent segments of the row and the horizontal columns melodies are not and thus may contain non-adjacencies for example the layout of all possible even cross partitions is as follows 6243342626 
Asterisk 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 One possible realization out of many for the order numbers of the 34 cross partition, and one variation of that, a 0369056E 147237T 258E1489 Thus if one's tone row was 0E742938T156, one's cross partitions from above would be 0431093 E2857485 796E2 T1 Cross partitions are used in Schoenberg's Opus 33A Klavierstück and also by Berg, but Dallapikoya used them more than any other composer. Topic <laughs> Other. In practice, the rules of twelve-tone technique have been bent and broken many times, not least by Schoenberg himself. For instance, in some pieces two or more tone rows may be heard progressing at once, or there may be parts of a composition which are written freely, without recourse to the twelve-tone technique at all. Offshoots or variations may produce music in which, the full chromatic is used and constantly circulates, but permutational devices are ignored. Permutational devices are used but not on the full chromatical though. Some composers, including Stravinsky, have used cyclic permutation, or rotation, where the row is taken in order but using a different starting note. Stravinsky also preferred the inverse retrograde, rather than the retrograde inverse, treating the former as the compositionally predominant, untransposed form, although usually atonal. Twelve tone music need not be several pieces by Berg, for instance, have tonal elements. One of the best known 12 note compositions is Variations for Orchestra by Arnold Schoenberg. Quiet in Leonard Bernstein's Condide satirizes the method by using it for a song about boredom, and Benjamin Britten used a 12 tone row a Thema serial con fuga in his Cantata Academica, Carmen Basilians as an emblem of academicism. <laughs> Schoenberg's mature practice Ten features of Schoenberg's mature twelve-tone practice are characteristic, interdependent, and interactive, Hexachordal inversional combinatoriality Aggregates Linear set presentation Partitioning Isomorphic partitioning Invariance Hexachordal levels Harmony Consistent with and derived from the properties of the referential set Meter, established through pitch relational characteristics, multidimensional set presentations. Topic See also List of dodecaphonic and serial compositions, All interval 12 tone row. All interval tetrachord 
all trichord hexachord pitch interval list of tone rows and series